Right now, I'm about halfway through Cinema 4D Basecamp, which is School of Motion's Introduction to Cinema 4D course. So this is my current assignment. I just handed it in. And let me play that for you. Okay, so it's it's a bit slower because it's um slower because you can't play in real time all these animations that are coming up. But you get the point. It's been about six, seven weeks and so this is the level that you can expect to be at after halfway through six weeks or so. So I want to show you the dashboard or what is it like to be in a school of motion course. I taken I've taken a few of their courses previously. For example, Express Expression Session was I think my first course that I took with with uh school of motion. I have a good sense of After Effects uh, as a beginner already, and I wanted to take on uh, Expression Session to understand more about expressions. And I think that was really useful because I, I learned how to do a lot of these um, expressions that I, I really had no clue, no idea about how to, how to find out about. I, I just knew the simple stuff like loop expression, wiggle expression, but from this course, I learned how to do uh, rigs. I learned more in depth, um, coding stuff. And yeah, and uh, the next one, uh, let me see animation bootcamp. So I learned animation, I took animation bootcamp as, um, like to br brush up on my animation skills because you can learn after effects, but still not know how to animate properly. For example, how to uh, massage the tangent points of the keyframes such that it looks um, more pleasing to, to look at. The point is that you can learn After Effects, but you, you don't know how to animate properly. So this was very good in learning how to animate in After Effects. And right now, I'm taking on C4D Basecamp. I'm uh, seven weeks through. It's a 12 weeks thing, like most of the courses that School of Motion offers. So what I like about it is very standardized. Most of these courses, you have uh, about 12 weeks to learn. Every week, there is a new class, about two to three classes. And each class will be about... Um, one to two hours, one to two hours each. And in between, there'll be like additional bonuses, short, shorter lessons, and then things like podcasts or uh, helpful PDFs that will help you along the way. Let's take a look inside the course for, uh, so you can see that you have a teaching assistant that will help you along the way. This teaching assistant will give you feedback on your assignments. So every week there's about two assignments and then you can see okay, it's, it's not marked complete. It's not marked 100% complete because you need to go in and then mark it yourself. But essentially, I, I, I just completed this uh, modern with MoGraph. You can see over here, there's a homework locker. I just uploaded this. And then when you upload your homework as your assignments, you can put in um, your feedback, your questions, and then your, what is this? Course teaching assistant will get back to you with uh, what you ask or give, and then also give you feedback on, uh, critique and give you feedback on your, your work. So you can see these are my previous work. Uh, let me show you. So orientation week, we were given like an introduction to C4D very basic stuff like how to build with primitive shapes and how to apply textures and lighting in the most basic way. So, uh, oh, let me show you my ramen store first. So this is the ramen store that I did, which was based on the first, the first week, the first lesson. So you don't have to follow along the lesson, 
but I recommend that you do because if um, it's like when you go through a YouTube tutorial, it's, it's best that you follow along whatever they teach step by step so that you learn by doing. And then when you do it, do the actual assignment again, you are a bit more familiar than if you didn't try it yourself the first time. So this was my assignment that I follow along. And yeah, so you learn how to do very basic stuff. All these are just like cubes, mostly cylinders. And then we apply very basic color textures. So the second week, we learned how to model. And then this was the first assignment that I did. We learned how to model with um, splines. So for example, this is using a spline and then you extrude. This is a text. You extrude all these shapes. And then this is this trophy is like uh, the line outside. And then you um, use one of the tools that go around. And then you get a trophy shape like that, uh, same as the bell. So uh, basic stuff, but uh, very necessary to learn. So in the same week, we also learn how to model a bit more advanced. So something like this, this is what I, this is what I handle in for the assignment. Uh, combine, how we combine shapes and models, and then how we um, build a bit more complex shapes like this. After that, it was intro to lighting. And then we learn, uh, let me see. So this one was what I did for the lighting assignment. They gave you the model and then you're supposed to work uh, how to light with this. Yep, this is uh, also and all these. So there are different ways to use lighting here. And it's, it, this was uh, very interesting because it's like doing what you do in real life. If you if you know how to, um, if you like to play with a video, or a vi if you like to play with lights in videos in real life, then this is like doing it in the digital world in 3D. This one also, and this one. So this one, there was a couple of different versions. The next assignment was, uh, let me see. The next assignment was to texture and light these headphones. So this was what I handed in. So there was a, there was a complex way to texture. This is how you see this leathery look and then this fabric look here. And then this is a more metallic finish. And then after that, there was a catch up week. So catch up week is just basically for you to, um, see what you missed out and then try to catch up it's a it's a break it's a one week break so you can use it to brush up on stuff that you worked on before or try to catch up if you missed out on any assignments and then the next week we had principles of animation uh this year is my bouncing ball animation homework that I submitted so very interesting so very similar to After Effects, where you animate a lot of the keyframes, the tangents, things like that. So if you know how to do this in After Effects, this might be a bit easier to work on in Cinema 4D than someone who doesn't have the experience. But you need to do all this in 3D and in a different interface. Then also animation is learning how to animate along a spline, which is what we did here, the resolution is a bit terrible because I, I lowered the, the resolution quality to make the export more uh, quicker. Next one is modeling with MoGraph, which was the, the more recent one. This is my first, this is the first assignment. So we learned how to use MoGraph, which is like the, as, as, I don't know how you put it. Like it's a special feature function that you have in Cinema 4D. It's not, there's, there's nothing quite like it in After Effects. So you can use this to do cloning, to do, yeah, to do animation, to make all these buildings 
very easily this lamp post build them up these cars clone it very easily in uh, cinema 4d and this one is another another view of the same city that i built here for the second assignment for Mograph, it's the one that you just saw that i did what we were supposed to do was to use the same cd that we that we built in the previous assignment but i chose to redo it because i i feel that it was uh more difficult to animate so so i redid it to make it better and then i also added text here and this is the final video do or do not do or do not do 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 not do or do not there is no try you get it so the the mograph was used here to animate all the objects so first the mograph was was used to create all these uh, duplicates so let me pause this so all these um buildings were made in like so-called easier way such that you don't have to model them one by one you create one um, part of the building and then you duplicate upwards and then you can shape it in various ways like you just want it straight you want it to be uh, smaller on top bigger below and then you can multiply upwards so that's a whole idea of MoGraph. i mean just this the simple idea of MoGraph. And then there are cars which are also duplicated so you can see that there is probably about three three or four four five cars and then we just use the MoGraph to duplicate them all across here same thing for all these um, smaller buildings and the trees and then the flowers and then after that we learn how to animate with MoGraph, which is what i've been uh which is what i did here so that's how you see all the buildings come alive in a sense and animate uh same thing for the clouds should they, they come on too quickly i think yeah they come on a bit too quickly so what i can do here is to rework my animation here if i'm not happy with it and then we'll go in back to the homework locker and then we can submit another assignment uh, not, not submit another assignment submit another version of the assignment so school of motion i think is a really good course for anyone who is interested to get into motion design there are a, a lot of courses available from vfx to after effects and then there are also uh, photoshop and illustrator courses that are meant for motion so for the price you pay i think it's really worth it because you you don't have to like go around on youtube and look at every single tutorial and try to find a, a course syllabus for yourself or it's, it's hard to find free resources that is this comprehensive and also teach you in a way that brings you from step a b c and then um doesn't jump from different topics and then you have to consolidate all the information yourself so for example when we learn here every week is built upon the previous week and then i think there's a, there's a good reason why we learn how to for example animate after we learn how to model after we learn a bit of lighting and then we learn more graph animations after that so everything feels like there's a good pace to it and even if you fall um you fall back because you got some commitments or you get busy there's still catch up week there are two weeks of catch up weeks to um get up to speed again i would definitely recommend this for anyone who is interested to get into motion design or just to brush up your skills so stay stay tuned i hopefully i will continue to share the rest of the weeks and how they are like and then the final piece what what i'll say is that if you take on this it's good to so-called um clear your calendar and try to focus on this as much as you can and what i like to do from from my perspective really is to really put as much as i can into this um so that in the future if i want to at the end of the course 
if I want to put this into like a mini portfolio, it's something that I can be proud of. If I um, put a bit more effort into this, I can post it on social media, just like a work in progress to share what I've been working on or what I've uh, learned in, from School of Motion. And that's what I did.